All right, today I wanted to show this uh, charge and discharge on this uh, lead alum cell that we've been working on. And if this doesn't make sense to the viewers, go back a couple of videos and take a look at what I've been working on. And then just punch up uh, lead alum uh, rechargeable cells on the YouTube search bar and you'll find all kinds of videos on this cell. And it, it works with lead and a separator that is got some kind of an alum and water saturated uh, electrolyte between the two lead plates. The uh, two lead plates are, are energized with a charge which sets up a chemical reaction like in a lead acid battery where the sulfate goes one way or the other way between those two plates depending on charge and discharge. And after this gets formed up it becomes a rechargeable battery. And this is the homemade one that I made here. Now, this is a uh, linotype lead, and you could use a number of kinds of leads, uh, different alloys, and pure lead if you want to. This has tin and antimony in it. But you can see that I've got this uh, blue separator material in there, and it has been soaked with this um, alum and distilled water. You have to use distilled water, you can't use tap water. And the alum is aluminum sulfate. Uh, preferably the ammonium aluminum sulfate. Now I've tried the other ones, the potassium seems to work also. But anyway, this has been formed up by charge and discharge, charge and discharge, so that it uh, is a rechargeable cell now. And it's very, very hard once these form up to get them to go down to zero. Even if you short them out, they seem to want to bounce back. Very similar to a galvanic cell. I have not figured that part out yet, why that would be doing that with two same metals. That, that's what I'm finding out. So let me show you what I've got here. I've got a little um, motor that I built uh, back in June. Uh, this is a little pulse motor that, uh, like I said, I built this back in June to try out these small cells with. It's just a little pulse motor. has a coil. has a switch on it, a reed switch. So when the magnet goes by the switch, energizes the circuit when there's an energy source there and turns the wheel, pushes this around. Now when the switch closes, the flyback from the coil energizes this LED. The energy comes back out of the coil and lights that LED. Now this little battery here, I'm going to show running the motor. And I'll put this up here on the, on the little device and plug it in. Nothing going on. Let me show you what the voltage is here with the um, cell hooked up. Fluctuates around a little bit, but basically it's uh, when the switch is closed, of course it's not showing anything. If I rotate the wheel a little bit, you can see the voltage fluctuates some. Let me disconnect the cell. Watch this rebound. It's going to rebound all the way up to about eight tenths of a volt. But it still is not enough to run this wheel. Plug that back in there. And it's just not enough to make anything happen. But watch this. This is what I found very, very fascinating. This acts like a supercapacitor. Um, that's the closest thing I can I can say to the, the, what I'm seeing here is something like a supercapacitor, but it's really a battery. It's not a supercapacitor. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap this with this three volts here, and watch what happens. And there it goes. the LED on. The wheel's going around. Let me show you the voltage on the cell now from that slight charge that I just put on it. And there's the loaded voltage on the cell dropping off like a supercapacitor. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to short this guy out. I'm going to punish it. Take the negative, put it over here to the positive, 
show that the cell is discharging now. Got no voltage on it. Let me pull this off. Watch this rebound now, like a capacitor or a battery will do. There, it's rebounding again. Plug this back in. This may go around real slow now, but not very fast. You might be able to see a blink, not really. I'll spin this up a little bit, show the, the loaded voltage again. Not much there. Now I'm going to take this battery again here and tap it on the, on the contacts. Here goes the motor again. This is going so fast the camera really can't even hardly pick this up. Let me show you the voltage again on the cell. This will be dropping off. And there's the motor running. Anyway, I just thought I would share this with um, the people that are following along and those that are actually building these things. Is This charge-discharge has to do with impedance on that cell. It can accept a charge very rapidly and it can meter it out very slowly. And this charge-discharge curve that we're studying, um, I'm going to be do looking at it on a computer pretty soon. Uh, is very fascinating. See, this is starting to slow down now. Should be able to see this blink. Camera's not picking it up. Let me do this one more time. Watch the LED here when I do this. There goes the LED on bright. There's the wheel spinning up. Show you the voltage again. This will go up to about a volt and a half to 1.8 volts. Anyway, that's my little uh, demonstration for day. That's today. That's this little um, homemade rechargeable lead alum cell. Thanks for watching.